Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot with you again, and welcome to another video in my Analyze This series. The purpose of this series is to examine replays contributed by viewers, looking at what they did right, but also at mistakes they may have made, and pointing out areas in which they might improve. The point is not to criticise the player, but rather to use this as something that we can all learn from together, and thereby improve our flying. This video features a couple of replays sent to me by Razor1103, who had a cameo role flying an IL-2 in my P-47 tutorial video, shooting me down when I strayed in front of his guns. So to quote Razor, I have tried to apply energy fighting tactics and knowledge to my flying style, but I can't seem to get it right. When I climb at the beginning I have little impact on the game and usually die before even attempting a boom and zoom, and rope dopes always end in me losing parts of my plane if I'm not simply shot down. I always did better flying like a madman, with little interest in preservation of my plane and more interest in the destruction of my opponents. So to get a feel for what he means, I'll look at the replay in which he flies like a madman. As you can see, he's in a Focke Wolf 190A4 and he's heading straight toward the combat zone at spawn altitude. First thing I notice is he's using the C key to look around and keep aware of his surroundings. He's spotted a target there a low-flying BF-110, and starts positioning for an attack, while keeping a close eye on the other planes in the area. He obviously values situational awareness, which is great to see. OK, approaching at high speed now, he settles in for a deflection shot from a nice angle, zooms in as he fires, and drops his first target. extends away towards safety, checks his surroundings, and starts regaining some altitude. Well, that was a textbook boom and zoom. It seemed to me that he did everything right. He kept track of enemy planes, he was decisive, used the dive acceleration and high-speed maneuverability of his 190 to set up the shot. Razor shouldn't worry about performing boom and zooms. He obviously has quite a good grasp of the tactic. OK, so what's he doing here? He's approached a bit of a fur ball from underneath, probably looking to see if he can get a shot at someone while they're busy dogfighting. He waits till he's nice and close, keeping his speed as high as he can before lifting the nose for a shot at the hurricane. Takes a bit of a risk here, continuing the attack as his speed drops below 200km an hour, which could have made him an easy target, but he quickly breaks off and switches to the Corsair, dropping into a beautiful diving turn to regain his lost speed. Note how he's keeping the Corsair in sight during this manoeuvre. Now he's well above 300km an hour, and he gets a nice deflection shot as the target changes direction. And that's kill number 3. Immediately he starts another diving turn to increase his speed, and take him back toward friendly territory, and takes the opportunity to look around while he plans his next engagement. The Focke Wolf 190 is a plane that needs to be flown at high speed, its strength being smooth intercept attacks rather than dogfights, and so far that's how Razor's used the plane. OK, he's picked out this B-25 here as his next target, approaching with a slight altitude advantage and his speed around 400 km an hour. He checks his 6 quite a lot while on approach, just making sure he's not going to be bounced while lining up the target. Speaking of the target, he flies around this hill to hit it with another deflection shot that lops off a wing for his fourth kill. Then it's back to friendly territory and more use of the sea key to check his surroundings, etc. Razor describes this as flying like a madman, with little interest in preservation of his plane, but I'm just not seeing that here. He's aggressively seeking out targets, yes, but his attacks have been measured, well planned and executed. He has a great habit of constantly refreshing his situational awareness, which tells me that he does care about staying alive. His tactic of looking around while approaching a target is a good way to prevent tunnel vision, but sometimes he takes it too far, as on that occasion, where a B-25 almost got a shot at him and he had to roll to evade a head-on. Another diving turn to keep his speed high, then after taking a shot at the Mitchell, he sees a Henkel 112 has latched onto him. There. He doesn't try to dogfight, instead he's going straight into a dive to maximise his speed, and uses rolling to deny the Henkel a gun solution. He continues to run back toward friendly territory, using the landscaper's cover with more rolling evasion. So this game showed an aggressive pilot with above average skills, who understands the importance of flying a Focke Wolf 190 at high speed in combat, his situational awareness is high, and he doesn't carelessly throw his plane away, quite the opposite in fact. Seeing this, I was wondering why you'd have problems with higher altitude energy fighting, 
it seems to me he has all the skills necessary to be as deadly at 4,000 metres as he was here below 1,000. OK, so let's take a look at this second replay. Instead of heading straight for the combat zone, he started this game by climbing to the side. Now I do have a couple of criticisms to, uh, to make here. Firstly, he's climbing on too shallow an angle. He should be looking for a sustained indicative airspeed of 280 km an hour in a Fokker-Wolf 190A4, not 330. His side climb also took him a long way from the battle, and it seemed overly passive to me. Anyway, he's headed back toward the battle now, and as you can see there's a bear cat up at altitude, though while we watch he dives away to attack someone. Now when you see an enemy fighter who's climbed, you have to take them seriously. The mere fact that they've climbed up there shows that they value an altitude advantage and may well know how to exploit it. Razor's obviously aware of the Bearcat, as he keeps looking to see what he's doing, but I'm not seeing the same level of aggression that I saw in the first replay. I'd have flown toward that Bearcat in order to keep above it and stop it climbing back up, but Razor's content to just watch from a distance. You can't be passive like that. Once you have altitude supremacy, you have to exploit it, and the best way to do that is putting pressure on enemies that want to climb. I'll pause it here to show what I mean. The Bearcat is definitely trying to regain altitude now, and it's the only threat to Razor's plane. I'd have looked to get above him, which would have put me in a position to attack if he ignored me and kept climbing, or force him to either try and helicopter up to attack, or give up and dive away. Razor, however, keeps to the same heading, and that gives the Bearcat far too much freedom. In a fighter you have to be proactive, trying to seize the initiative and take control of the engagement, just as Razor did in his first game at low altitude. The moment you stop doing this and start flying defensively, you cease to be a fighter, instead you've become a target. Unfortunately, War Thunder's shoddy replay system decides that we don't need to see the Bearcat's icon at this point, which is a bit of a pain. Anyway, Razor's now going into a shallow dive, still flying at an oblique angle to the approaching Bearcat. And at first I was rather puzzled by what he was trying to achieve, but it soon became clear. He's trying to set up a rope-a-dope. His idea is to encourage the Bearcat to attack him, then use the speed from his dive to lift up and outclimb the Bearcat, getting him to stall and thus getting the kill. And as you can see, the Bearcat has taken the bait, and he's flying straight toward us. Now there's nothing wrong with ropeadopes. I perform a lot of them myself. However, I never look to rope a target when a straightforward boom and zoom diving attack would do the job instead. Anyway, he's lifted up into the climb and now everything hinges on which plane is going to stall first. Looking at the Bearcat, he's not climbing as steeply as Razor is, which means he's managing his energy and it is no danger of stalling, unlike Razor, who's now lost all of his speed and is going to have to flip over into a dive. So I'll just pause for a few seconds while I summarise what's gone wrong to this point. Firstly, the Bearcat was allowed to climb back up after diving earlier on. Razor should have flown toward him, looked to boom and zoom if he tried to climb. He allowed the Bearcat to seize the initiative and attack, hoping to counter with a rope-a-dope when it should have been Razor doing the attacking. Secondly, the 190 is not a great plane to rope-a-dope with. Its rudder and elevators are weak, it can't easily spiral climb, it's sloppy in a hammerhead turn. Even if he did get the Bearcat to stall, the chances are it would have enough time to recover before Razor managed to get a firing solution. Thirdly, he entered the rope dope without any way of assessing the Bearcat's speed. Do you know the old saying about lawyers cross-examining witnesses in court, that they should only ask questions to which they already know the answer? Well, it's the same with rope dopes If you don't know for sure that you have more energy than the opponent, it's a gamble to stake everything on whether they'll stall before you. Lastly, think for a second about the two planes here, a Focke Wolf 190A4 versus a Bearcat. Which of the two is likely to have more engine power, the mid-war 190 or the post-war plane? Simple logic tells you the Bearcat's likely to win a climbing contest. So let's move on. Razor's forced to roll over and dive, and the Bearcat uses his conserved energy to lift up and take a shot at him. At this point I expected Razor to go into an evasive dive as the rope dope had failed. Instead he decides to engage the Bearcat in a looping dogfight. The Focke Wolf 190 is no match for most fighters in a turning battle, so this is not using the plane to its strengths. And that's going to cost him, as the Bearcat manages to get guns on target a second time, and the 190 takes damage to an aileron which hamper, hampers his uh, roll rate. Razor finally breaks off and dives away, but it's harder to evade now with that damaged aileron. To be honest, he's lucky his plane's still flying at all. At this point he needed to be setting course straight toward the friendly fighter spot. Unfortunately he's dived toward an airfield, where there's plenty of enemy fighters. He's forced to level off, with the fighter spawn still some distance away. And although the Bearcat switched to another target, he's picked up a Corsair in its place, 
and being unable to evade effectively, it's only a matter of time before he loses his plane. He's running hard, weaving around the trees, shells are landing around him. There goes a wingtip, and now the other wing's gone as well. Let's take a look at things from the Bearcat's point of view, as there's a lot to learn from how he flew his plane. I'm picking it up from where he's starting his climb back to altitude. He's taking his time and keeping his speed very high, and that gives him plenty of options. OK, there's Razor flying across his path from right to left. Here's the path he's going to follow as he tempts the Bearcat, flown by Phantom Q, into the rope dope Phantom sees him and has obviously uh, decided to attack even before Razor dangles the bait with his shallow dive. And there he goes into the dive. Now watch the Bearcat's speed and note how he's keeping the nose down. It's the same tactic Razor himself used in the first replay when he intercepted a hurricane at higher altitude. As Razor starts to climb, Phantom has increased his climb angle to follow, but as soon as his speed drops beneath 400 km an hour, he drops the nose again. Phantom obviously knows what Razor's up to, and he's not going to let his plane stall. Instead he's waiting for Razor to run out of energy due to his steeper climb angle, and then lifts up to attack. Now both planes are at low speed, but Razor's dive first, and he could have escaped. But he decided to try dogfighting, which played right into Phantom's hands, as his plane is a better turner. So thinking about these two replays, it's almost like I'm looking at two different pilots. The Razor in the first game was aggressive and decisive. He flew like, a, flew like a hunter and used the strengths of his plane. The Razor in this game was timid and defensive. He didn't use his altitude advantage to take control of the situation and look to attack enemy planes like the Bearcat. Where he should have been patrolling above the Bearcat to stop him from climbing, instead he gave the Phantom, uh, gave Phantom plenty of room to climb and then tried to rope a dope, a tactic that's ill-suited to his Fog of War 590 and that's perfectly suited to the Bearcat's superior engine power. My advice would be to keep things simple. Stay aggressive, look to engage opponents at high speed exactly as he did in the first game, just using his higher altitude as a means of generating that speed to attack targets rather than trying to trap enemies with stall tactics. I'd like to thank and congratulate Razor for sending me the replays. I do hope this video is helpful both to him and anyone else who may be struggling to learn energy fighting tactics. If anyone has replays they'd like me to narrate without fear of criticism, please upload them to a file sharing service and message me on the forums describing what I'm looking for and when it occurs in the replay. Hopefully I can help to shine a light on where and why things are going wrong and help us all improve our flying. But that's all I have for this video. Until the next one, fly smart and good hunting.